My name is Liam McFall and I was born in Rathlin. Growing up on the island, coming out here as a child with my father who worked at the lighthouse, got to know all the light keepers and you know, it was a privilege to come out here and have a cup of tea with them. This west end of the island facing out then coming traffic from the Atlantic, coming through what is a relatively narrow passage between Ireland and Scotland. To get that sort of arc of light covering both the North Channel and the South, they decided to go for this point here. 1912 to about 19. My grandfather was involved in the construction work. The first job they had to do was constructed a landing jetty at a fishing cove down about half a mile away. So then they had to construct a railway coming up the cliff. It was winched up and down with a horse winch right up to the top and then again it would have been physically moved from those trolleys into the carts and drawn out by horses to the headland here. So it was all that work had to be done before they even started to build the lighthouse. The actual function of the light being safety to mariners at sea and that if you got them bothered, there's a good likelihood that the light keepers would have been there and watched out. Yeah, there's a lot of shipwrecks around the island. Um, the ones most notable to just up here at this lighthouse is a 1949, there was a, a fishing trawler grounded on the, the rocks here, very stormy weather. Um, it was the light keepers here. When they were doing the, the final shutdown of the light at dawn that morning, they looked out the window and saw the mast lights of the ship on the rocks right beside them. All the crew of 14 was taken off that by the Island Life Saving crew. The wreckage of that ship is still some of the old metal you can see down on the beach today. It was very sad to, to come along and, and know that there was no longer any light keepers growing up and coming out here and the kettle was always on and the cup of tea was offered as soon as she came in and just to know that the whole thing had fell silent and myself you know involved in fishing around the island you know when you came around there and it was sort of a dark old wintry morning and the light was shining out but you just knew there was nobody there where there was no need to it was doing all its own thing it was great then to reopen it up to the public and to not only enjoy the seabird spectacle which is, but uh, also you know that new life of the lighthouse my first season of working with RSPB, one of the first duties that was asked of me was to open up the gates and to bring people down to the lower level to see the seabirds. And I was more than happy to do it because it meant so much to me. It's a wonderful visit to go get through the lighthouse and you know read all about the history of how, how the lighthouse worked and how the lightkeepers interacted with the community. Also the importance of it as a, an area to, to view an internationally important seabird colony and you can get right bang into the middle of it. At one point there was a, a lady wrote that the, the construction of the lighthouse you would think was purposely made for viewing seabirds. Being associated with the West Lighthouse when I was a very small child and uh, being very comfortable out here, it's like home from home. <laughs>